Now then, this is uh, 10 ways I beat depression. And with each one of these, there will be a separate video, at least one, because I'm not going that deep into every single part. Um, I'll save that for another time. So this is a little bit of a background. The camera keeps falling down. Here we go, here we go. So a bit of background on me. Um, basically, I... I don't really know what, how it happened. I blamed, I think I blamed my goals on my misery. Because I wasn't where I wanted to be. And uh, so I kind of stopped thinking if I stop, then it won't make me miserable anymore. And I kind of gave up. I just went to work, put my head down, come home. I isolated myself. I, I know I did. I think I was easily done. Considering all the lockdown and all that sort of thing that we all went through. And um, yeah, I gave up on all my all my hobbies and interests and goals. And I just just work, go home, sit on my arse, eat crap, a lot of crap. And that was about it really. Just waiting for the end of days. And uh, I dare say, I imagine a lot of other people are living their lives like that. And, you know, it's the same year every year if you're going to live like that. And what's the point? You know, we need more. We need more in life. I think we all do. It's an easy life, isn't it? Too easy. So anyway. Number one. Exercise. I know you don't want to hear it. No one wants to hear that, but I'm afraid that is the truth. Exercise is the greatest form of antidepressant on the planet, bar none, and it's free. I mean, don't get me wrong, you get a gym membership, but if you can't afford one, and I don't want to hear excuses. Oh, I can't exercise, I can't afford it, I can't. Yes, you can. You can do press-ups at home, you can go for a walk or a jog. You don't need money to exercise. So that is key. I mean, there's, you know, the endorphins that you get from from doing exercise is it's great. I've never had a never had a workout where where I didn't finish feeling great. I don't feel great at the time. And if I only went to the gym when I felt like it, I'd have bigger tits than my ex. It's just about doing it. Just do it. Do the hard stuff. Number two. <laughs> Talking. Talking. So I've got a therapist. Shout out to my therapist. You did a great job. And you're a lovely lady. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, put me in the right direction. And sort of show, show me where I was going wrong. And quickly figured that one out and on the up pretty pretty quickly um but not just my therapist i talked to my friends uh, my closest friends and i will say i mean i left it late i always wait till after i'm out of it and then i'll talk to my friends like oh by the way i was struggling but i'm all right now it was now i think it was the case of i didn't want to be talked out of what i've already made my mind up to do and I think that's probably the case for a lot of people in them situations. Um, but, hey, I made it out. And, you know, you just need a few friends. Or you know, a really close family member or a really close friend. One or two. That's all you need. And when I say talking, I don't mean broadcasting. This is not what I'm talking about. I don't mean attention-seeking because, you know what you're doing there? You're attracting bad attention. You really are. If you're going to keep moaning all the time and, oh, woe is me all the time. That's not what I mean by talking, right? You, you're just you're letting it out there. You're broadcasting it. You're, you're attention-seeking, you can call it. And you're pushing people away. If you've got some good friends, and if you're a good friend, you're going to have plenty of good friends. Talk to them. Yeah, just say, look, I'm struggling, and I could do with your help. 
and a good friend's gonna help you every time. I know if any of my close friends came to me, I need help. Got your back. Got your back. Number three. Intermittent fasting. I know none of you like the sound of this one already. I didn't like the sound of it either. Just randomly I heard it on a podcast and I thought, and they were on about all the benefits and I thought, well, I've got fuck all else to lose. I'm miserable as shit. Might as well give it a go. So I did. And it wasn't easy. I ate like a fat pig a lot. Um, we're never without food, really. And I ate a lot of shit and all. Uh, but the intermittent fasting, I got th you know, I got hungry. I'd just drink. I'd drink some water. That were it, just water till, uh, till the evenings. And quickly, after a couple of weeks, I, I felt... I felt great, more energy, better focus, less depression, just sharper. I was on it. I felt much better. And you know, when you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, what's better? A lion that's just had its dinner or a hungry lion. I know from when you think about it, hungry lion every time. Same when you think about the cavemen. When we were cavemen. Do you really think we had three meals a day every day? I don't think so. Not a chance. We had, we ate when we could, and it was hard, and we had to work for it. And you're pushing that mind frame. And I tell you now, when I did eat on the evenings, it tasted so much better. It was like, I can't, it's hard to explain, but yeah, it, it, I'd eat after an all day of not eating, and I'm like, oh, this tastes lovely. Whereas before, I just shoveled it down anyway. Didn't really give it much thought. And the big one with this one as well, and I'm not just talking mental clarity and energy. I mean, I, I was getting a bit chubby um, before I started. That went away, straight away. Uh, within two weeks, I dropped two belt sizes, and I am pretty much what I am now. Um, and also, the biggest one, the <laughs> by far the biggest one, which I was not expecting, my joint pain. Now, I suffered with knee pain since I was a teenager and block paving all the time on my knees. They weren't getting any better, they were getting worse. And my arm, this left arm, was knackered. I couldn't straighten it. I couldn't I couldn't put it out straight at all. Um, it'd wake me up three or four times a night with the pain. And every shovel, every shovel full at work, ow! Ow. You get the point. And I was thinking, how much longer have I got of this? Because this is killing. And you know what? Since, I'd say, three, four weeks in doing the intermittent fasting, I don't get any pain. <laughs> it's not, my elbow's not hurt once. And my knees and cat on one hand in this past year. Um, not many times it's hurt. So there's something to it. Uh, so yeah, give it a go. It's not easy. But it's worth it. And I, I will never go back. Never go back. Four. Number four. Having a purpose. Now, I don't think many people really do. And I felt like I did at the time. Uh, it was me writing, uh, me music, and me creative stuff anyway. And being a dad. Which is still top of my list. I think if you don't have a purpose, then you don't really have a reason to get up in the morning. Do you know what I mean? And if you don't have a reason to get up in the morning, then you're not going to want to get up in the morning, are you? And if you're not going to want to get up in the morning, and you, but you have to anyway, you're going to feel pretty crap. But if you've, got, if, you've, if you've got a purpose and you're following it, and you think, what am I passionate about? I will do a video at some point about how you can find your passion and find your purpose. So stay tuned for that one, if you're wondering to yourself, how the hell am I going to find my purpose when I don't do, no, I don't know. I've got you covered. Patience. Five. Right, number five is taking accountability and uh, self-reflection. Because I can look back and think, it was me who got myself into that situation. 
my decisions led me to there. And you can all turn around and go, well, it's because of this, or because of that, or because of that. Yes, you can make all the excuses under the sun, but it's not going to help, is it? If you take, take accountability, take responsibility, it's your life. You're in, you're in control. And if you're going to moan and all this, like, oh, it was this, or the other, next, make excuses. All you're telling me is that you cannot control your life, and you need to. You can't control your life, and we've got problems. But we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out anyway, so don't panic too much if you can't control your life. There's, way, there's ways we can give you back your control, and uh, we'll, we will get there. So, and, yeah, a big part of the self-reflection as well is that you're able to understand yourself more, understand your weaknesses, your strengths, all that kind of thing. Six. No, I got wrong. Six. So number six is uh, diet. So as I mentioned before, the, the, the fasting, well, I severely cut down my sugar intake, and I think that did me a world of good as well. I was eating, I was coming home after I'd already had two meal deals at work, I'd have a giant mountain of a plate of whatever I'm eating. Then I'd have a full box of roses or, and something else usually as well. Uh, followed by a protein shake or something like that. And uh, sometimes I'd binge a hell of a lot more than that. And I was <laughs> not good at all. It's a wonder I wasn't fatter than I actually was. Uh, I was only a bit chubby, but it's a wonder I wasn't 30 stone. Seven. Number seven. Quitting porn. Right? And I know it sounds like, oh, there's only porn. Now, no, it's more than that. So anyway, I'd, not that long back, before the the deep depression, I uh, was in a relationship and I left her. And let's just say she was very, very good to me <laughs> on the, on a nightly basis. Very good. And becoming single all of a sudden, uh, since leaving her, I didn't really think this one through. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I missed that. And as much as I, you know, met women and things like that <laughs> on a nightly basis, that's a bit tricky. And um, so, yeah, resort to a bit of porn and uh, rub one out now and then, you know what I mean? Then you get a bit reliant on it, you know what I mean? And then it gets to the point when you go a day without and you think, oh, I can go a day without. But then you keep falling to it anyway. Uh, as soon as you feel you're bored. Oh, I'm so overweight. It's not good. It's killing your motivation. Big time. And I will do another video on this as well. Um, on dopamine and things like that. If you don't know what that is, don't panic. We'll get there. Um, but we will figure that one out. And yeah, it's evil. Stay well away from porn. I'll never go anywhere near it ever again. Ever. Number eight. Eight. Number eight. We've got meditation. Now, this is something I'm bringing back into my life. I kind of, kind of went after a while. I think it's time. It's time. It's like always the first thing to go. I'm like, oh, I got time to meditate today. Make time, uh, which is what I'm doing in this one of my New Year's resolutions. I am making time to meditate 20 minutes a day that is it 20 minutes of your time try it uh, the amount of people i say have you tried meditating yeah how did you get on oh crap tried it a couple of times and uh, no yeah well that's like me going to the gym for the first time and trying to bench 500 kilograms it ain't gonna happen you're gonna be crap at it for a long time I was, I'll be there for two minutes and like, oh, I can't switch off. And all, the whole time I'm like, oh, I just want to play on my phone or I want to do something else or this, that and the other. But you get better at it. It's practice. Take time. And you keep at it, you will get better. And then you'll start feeling the benefits. And I tell you now, every time, say 20 minutes, meditation, just sit there, just focus on my breathing, try not to think or anything. 
Um, close my eyes. Yeah, just focus on the breathing. And I tell you now, after 20 minutes, I'd come back to and I'd be like, right, I am on it. And it just gave me a push. Like I understood what was important, what I needed to do, and what I was going to do. And I'd just go out and do it. So number nine is stop overindulging full stop. And uh, this goes back to the the dopamine and a big uh, there's a big factor in all of these and I, I can't stress this enough it is discipline if not discipline I'd be miserable again uh, discipline is my key to happiness and I do I do believe it's the same for a lot of other people as well because if you're cutting out things that make you lazy lack your motivation and you, and you get too wrapped up in comfort and pleasure seeking it's this instant gratification as opposed to the delayed gratification if you're constantly seeking instant gratification well that's easy and it's a quick do you know what I mean whereas delayed gratification things that take work so if you're constantly consuming instant gratification you watch you're watching Netflix, but you're also on your phone on social media and you're eating crap food and you're doing this, that and the other. It's all instant gratification. Minimal effort for a good dopamine hit. And now all of a sudden you're like, oh, you're not going to feel like doing anything, are you? You're not going to be focusing on your goals and looking after yourself and things of that nature. So yeah, um, I stopped all overindulging. And especially now in the new year, like I said, I'm I'm cutting a lot back and I'm focusing heavily on work. Um, I'm allowed allowing myself half an hour downtime, other than visiting friends, family, and things like that. Um, half an hour of YouTube when I eat, and that's it. Now, uh, I mean, I've been using social media, but I've been trying to trying to promote this, trying to advertise this. So I want to get off it, but at the same time, I kind of need to do that. So I'm trying to use it as much as I can strictly for this, for the purpose. And yeah, there we go. Number 10, self-compassion. Yeah, I said it, self-compassion. And you're probably thinking, what are you on about? Well, I had a bad habit of... You know, say you you drop something or anything like that. Calling myself black and blue, I was horrendous. If you ever somebody heard me talking to myself, they think Jesus. I would effing blind and call myself all sorts all the time. It was like a frustration thing, you know what I mean? But it was a frustration thing at myself. At bullying, do you know what I mean? If somebody did that to somebody else, that, that that's bullying. Do you know what I mean? Especially the the amount I was doing it to myself. You imagine somebody calling you this, that and the other all the time. Can you imagine that? That's going to break down. That's going to break down your self-esteem, your self-worth. But I did. And I don't do that anymore. I made a conscious, very conscious about it, where now, if I do make a mistake, it's a mistake. And if I catch myself about to say something, then I'll be kind of playful with it. And I'll tease me, oh, what you like? Do you know what I mean? As opposed to you, f this, that, and the other. And uh, it, it's helped a long way. And I think another way to look at this is look at yourself, right? you probably never heard anyone say this, but I'm going to say it. It's something I thought about one day. Look at yourself. Have a deep look at yourself. And just remember what you was like when you were a kid, right? And now you imagine there's a little little child, little boy, little girl, whichever, and they had your life, right? They went through all the crap that you ever went through, the good times and all the bad. And, you know, life beat them up just like it beat you up. And they got to the point that where you are now and say they're, they're failing or whatever, however you think you're doing in life. How would you feel about them? What would you tell them? Yeah, you could be hard on yourself, but you know, if that was somebody you cared about, say if that was your child, you know, you'd have the compassion there. 
and uh, not beat yourself up and think you know there's a reason and I mean, like I said I'm not here for excuses but there are reasons why we do the things we do but it's just being aware of them and change, breaking the cycle changing growing which is what we're all about here so yeah I'll probably do another video a bit more in depth and a bit more thought going into that one um, but I hope that's open your eyes anyway so that was that's what it was anyway top 10 ways I beat depression cheers